All right, what up, what up, what up, what up? You already know what to do. It's your boy, B-Phil, and it's time to learn something new. But first, if you're a builder, look below in the description. I have a school group where I'm building a community of builders. If that's you, you want to build with data, go ahead and join the, the school group. If that's not you, go ahead and hit the Calendly link, and we can go ahead and set up some technical conversation to go ahead and get your use case fleshed out and in production. So without further ado, let's learn something new. Oh, oh, the transition is not smooth, but it's good. Okay, so today we're going to be utilizing DSPy to get structured output. So what you can see here is we have some code changes, and what we want to do is send those code changes through our local language models or local large language models, local models, whatever you want to call them. We're going to be utilizing Llama 3.8b, and we're going to be utilizing Quintu 7b. Now we can go and look at what these models are doing or what their signatures are so let's go ahead and look up llama 3 and we'll say 8b right here so we can see here as a context length of 8,000 um, 8 billion parameters so this this typically means some type of input and then the output obviously doesn't have it here um, I believe it's 4,000 or so it might be 8,000 but Basically, we're going to be utilizing this model here. You can check this card on Hugging Face yourself. And then we're going to be putting that up against the Quintu 7B Instruct. And this one is 7 billion parameters. And this one has a very long context length. So it has up to 131K tokens. And I believe it's 32K output. Um, this is the 72. No, yeah, this is 7B. So. I was able to get max tokens of like 10K, but you can go through this and you can go ahead and see what the actual configurations for this is. So max position embedding. So I'm believing this right here is gonna show you the actual output that we can get, which this is gonna be 32,768. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, by the way, but this is essentially what we're gonna be doing today. So code changes. Llama 3 through Llama 3 8B, and we're going to get out some structured uh, JSON output. Then we're going to do the same thing with Quintu 7B and get some structured JSON output. So without further ado, let me just step you through the code. So today, basically what we're going to be doing is stepping through this. I'm not going to go ahead and do a code along situation. I want to just step you through what I built with DSPy so that you can get an understanding of how you can go ahead and utilize this with your particular use case. So let's go in first, I wanna show you the information I'm using. So I went to DSPy, I found a pull request, and then I found some changes that a pull request, you know, someone is um, proposing for this particular pull request. And so what I did was, is I extracted the red and the green, right? I, I labeled the red old, and I labeled the green new. So we can see that in the code here. If I go ahead and bring up this code review, document so old code and then boom I put that in there in the new code bam so I did that two times right for the pair and that's it so what we want to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and extract out a summary and you can see that here I've defined a review summary and I want to say a summary of the code code changes summary of the code changes in the code file then I want to go ahead and extract out a severity implied severity of the code changes right it can be three things, critical, serious, or minor. And then we have an explanation for the severity selection. And then we have a review category. And this is the categories of the code changes. And so we wanna categorize the code changes. So for example, this is a readability, maybe maintainability, security, etc. And then what we wanna do is bundle those all up together. So we can go ahead and send them off to whatever downstream system can utilize these to do some type of display or even for storage. And so what I've done is I've created three custom signatures. And so these are gonna be the raw summary, the raw severity, and the raw category. And so when I was doing this with Llama 3, this was a little bit difficult because it doesn't seem to be able to output in a single step the JSON output, right? So it get, it seems like it always appends it. And you'll see this when I, when I run this because I still couldn't get the categories to work. And I'm gonna talk about this later on, but I would probably recommend the Quinn 2 over this one 
if you can, because Quang 2 is a little bit smaller in the memory footprint and it's gonna, gonna be a bit faster if you just see the run times here. I'm gonna run these twice so you can get an idea of how fast they are. Um, okay, so what I did next, I had the raw category and you can just see here, right? I'm putting in the actual code changes and then I'm getting an output of a string for review and same with the severity um, and explanation of that severity. These are both strings as well. And then for the categories, I wanna give out, get out a string of categories and then explanations as well. Next, I, I go ahead and create signatures to actually extract that text into JSON because for whatever reason, again, it didn't seem like it wanted to do the extraction in one step. So I had to, I thought let's break down the problem and let's get the text first and then do the extraction. And that did work better for the summary and the severity, but unfortunately not for the category. So I went ahead and did these here. So extract the relevant information from the input into valid JSON. Do not add any additional text before or after. And I have this same doc string for each of these extraction signatures. Next, I created model modules to orchestrate these particular tasks, right? Because what you can do is you can have them all right in one place, or you can you can do them one after the other, typing the information in. This module essentially does that same thing, but it orchestrates it in just one package. You can export, put this in some other file, right? And then you can go ahead and import it into whatever your programs are. This makes it more modular, hence modules. So you go ahead and initialize the actual raw summary, and we're going to be using the predict um, the predict module here from DSPy, and we're going to pass in the raw summary signature. So again, we want the input of some code changes, and then we want to get out some summary as a string. Next, we're going to be using the type predictors, and this allows us to put those pydantic types on our input or output, and then have it be sent into the LLM in a very in a structured format that then the LLM can output into. And then we'll get that back in that pydantic model format. And then we can go ahead again, pass that to some downstream system to easily and reproducibly extract. When I say easily, you know, that's that's relative. So I've done that. And then I went ahead and created the forward method. And these are the same for severity category as well. I went ahead and specified the Olama model. And here I put 6,000. So I'm pretty sure when I looked it up, it was 8,000, I think, max max tokens out for the output. So then what we do is we initialize the modules, right? And then we go ahead and pass in the code changes to the forward method. And then we go ahead and get the output. So we're going to go ahead and write and see what happens with the Llama 3 8B model. And what you're going to see... It's gonna take, I'm gonna run this twice because this is the startup time locally for this particular model. And we wanna go ahead and just get a better idea of like how long it takes to go through. Um, we, we have the liberty of having these notebooks and we have this timer here. And let's see how long it takes until we get to the last module. So we got our prediction, so we got a review summary. That looked like it came out pretty quickly and we're still waiting for the severity. And you can see this has taken some time here, which is not, not too bad, but it is what it is. Okay, so now we got our, out our review severity. Minor, code changes are minor because they only involve refactoring the existing logic. To make it more readable and maintainable. New code is equivalent to functionality in old code. Okay, so you can see that it's actually giving some good information here. And again, this is where Maybe you have a code review, you want to get some get some initial output, or maybe you have a open source like framework where you want to provide some type of review because you're only two maintainers, something like that. This is this could be tremendously useful. What comes to mind right now is there's a code reviewer called Rabbit, I believe it is, that a majority or a lot of people use right now. And this will be something similar. You can have on a local model, something very relatively expensive, inexpensive. So you can see here, too many retries, try and get the correct structured output. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the last output that we got. And you can just see here, right? Here's the relevant information extracted in valid JSON. And then we're going to go back to, so two from the back. So here's a sync JSON object that valid. And really the problem here is, is it wants to put this text in front of the JSON output. And for whatever reason, this category 
just when it has category in it and the explanations of categories, it just seems like it doesn't want to work correctly. And so you can see here, right? We, we got the, the summary and we got the actual severity, but it seems like this categories, it seems like something with this is the problem with Llama um, 3, 8B. Now we're going to go ahead and look at Quinn. So with Quinn, I did a similar approach, except for this time, instead of having um, separate steps for outputting the summary and then extracting the JSON from that summary, I just have it all in one step. And you can see here on these signatures and let's go raw summary. You can see, I just get out a review summary. I get out review severity and I get out review category. Oh yeah, by the way, that, that took about a minute. We'll run that one more time at the end just so you all can see one more, one more again. And so you can see that I'm just passing it these types directly, right? So I, I want I want them to get out, I want to get out these types directly. We don't need a s additional step here. So then of course I just specify the module and I'm just doing these type predictors here. And then finally, I just have this review module where I just orchestrate all of these other modules and then we go ahead and dump that in a review object. Um, for the max tokens here for Quinn 27 b I go ahead and just put 10,000 for output, which it can handle. And then I just go ahead and run it. So let's, let's run it now and see what we get. And so you'll see with this particular example, and again, a lot of this takes some time and some modification. And this is why sometimes you may not utilize these local models is because you know, you could just use some proprietary model off the shelf and get something without all of this <laughs> runaround. But if you have a need for privacy, um, that's a big one that folks, you know, we're not sure about these terms and services and all this good stuff. Um, then this would definitely be the route that you probably want to take. So we're going to look here and we're going to wait for 7B. And you can see here, right, it gave us everything. It was pretty uh, I don't want to say quick, we're going to run it one more time just to, so 37 seconds, let's run this one more time. But you saw we got the structured output and we didn't have to do those intermediate steps where we get the text and then we get the output from the text, so on and so forth. We just did zero shot, boom, we're good. So this entire module took about 11 seconds to run and we can look, the code changes involve refactoring and it gives us a summary, refactoring the original code to use a dictionary for storing field details. Um, iterating through it to update the signature object. Okay, I mean, this this looks pretty good. Um, explanations. So this is so serious. The changes introduce a significant alteration in logic and structure of the code. Um, okay, and then we got the categories, which is readability, improve code readability by using more descriptive variables, and we have maintainability, and that's pretty much it. So you can see here these models, and let's go to Llama really quickly so you can get a good idea and we'll run the llama one more time. But we really, if we look at the signatures or the footprint of these models, so we have the 8B model. This is 4.7 gigs. And then we go to the Quinn 2 model. And this is, <laughs> hold on, uh, 7B. This is 4.4 gigs, right? So you can already see, we look at this, it's about 300 megs smaller. So, you know, you save a little bit of space and you get the output you're looking for. So to the actual commenter in the YouTube video that inspired this video, you probably just want to switch to that 7B model unless you have a really good reason not to. So anyways, let's go ahead and do this final run and we'll go back to the llama model and we'll run it one more time. And we'll probably have to run it twice. Um, you can go ahead and skip to the end of the video. Um, there's something there for you, but ultimately we're going to see this run and it's, it's going to fail in the last step. We saw it took about a minute to get done, which is a drastic difference than, you know, the 11 seconds that Quinn seven B is going to go ahead and give you. Now this video wouldn't have been possible like a month ago, but it is possible now. And if you can use this model, I suggest you use it. If you have a need for local or privacy use cases, it's just that good. So we get right 40 seconds now. We got the second output. And let's see if we get the third. All right, 48. And we're gonna run this one more time just to <laughs> make sure that we're we're trying to be 
as good as possible with this, but we already know it's going to fail, unfortunately. It's going to have three retries, and yeah, you can go ahead and tweak the code yourself and see if you can get this to pass. And if you can, well, you know, go ahead and use that Llama 3 8B model. It could serve you. So these retries are just taking a long time here. And I think for the sake of this video, we kind of already have a good idea of what's going on here. It's just going to fail and then see how long that takes. So I encourage you to go in the description and go to the GitHub link. But remember, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well if you want to see additional videos like this. Leave me a comment of what else you want to see and other tests that I can go ahead and do so you don't have to. And actually, you should be doing these things because this channel is for builders and for all you people out there watching, go build something. It's your boy B. I'm out. Peace.